Hello and welcome back. The previous episode of Introduction to Hashcat proved to be quite popular, so my colleague Mike Peterson and I decided to create part two. In this episode, we're going to perform a brief introduction of one of the new features available in Hashcat 4.0, cover an optional flag you may find especially useful, and lastly, look at a password attack that we didn't previously cover. Now, if you haven't yet watched Introduction to Hashcat, shame on you, but it is recommended that you do so prior to watching this. We'll be using Hashcat 4.1.0 for this video, though the options from version 3.6 to version 4.1 have remained relatively stable. If, however, you are using a version prior to 4.0, do pay attention to the newly added dash capital O option that was introduced in 4.0, which we'll cover shortly. Hashcat 4 added several new features, fixed various bugs, and improved support for Mac OS. However, perhaps the biggest change is that Hashcat now supports passwords and salts of up to length 256. Previously, Hashcat was limited, in general, to passwords with a maximum length of 55 characters. You can read more about this in the Hashcat FAQ and in the 4.0.0 release notes, both of which will be linked in the video's description. The summary that's important for today's video is that attempting to crack passwords longer than 55 characters uses a non-optimized kernel that severely impacts performance. If you want to use the faster hand-optimized kernels, you now need to specify the dash capital O or dash dash optimized dash kernel dash enable option. So again, use of optimized kernels is no longer the default in version four. It severely impacts performance if not used, but usage does limit the maximum password candidate length, so keep those things in mind. In the following example, we can see the impact that using or not using hand-optimized kernels can have. First, let's see the results without optimization. And as you can see here, the speed is listed as 821.9 mega hashes per second. Now let's see the results with optimization. And as you can see, we have added the dash capital O flag, and we have nearly doubled the number of hashes per second being attempted. Remember though, this limits the length of password candidates that will be attempted. In general, we will use the dash capital O option from here on out unless we have a specific need otherwise. So to recap, in our example, we've seen an increase of nearly 1 billion hashes per second when attempting to crack MD5 hashes, nearly twice the speed. Now let's take a look at a quick introduction to a flag that you might find especially useful. The dash dash STD out option displays our password candidates in standard out for us to see, in other words, on screen. And of course, we can also redirect this output to a file. So think of this as a dry run. Now you may ask yourself, why is this useful? Well, perhaps we only want to verify that a rule set is generating the candidates that we would expect. However, we could also use this to generate dictionaries that we might use in an actual attack. Here's a quick example. What we've done here is taken a common dictionary set and mangled it with the best 64 rule list. We could then take these mangled words and use them in a combinator attack as follows. The combined dictionary will have a much higher probability of generating good candidates than, say, an all lowercase list of the top 20,000 words alone. Now, we're not actually going to run through a live demo of this, but we did want to introduce it here because this flag will be especially useful in a variety of situations. By the way, if you're not familiar with the combinator attack, do take a look at the previous video in this series because we covered that in pretty good detail. And finally, we're at the point where we'll cover a new attack type, or at least new to this series, and look at a brief demonstration. PRINCE stands for Probability Infinite Chained Elements. And I'm going to read you the description from the GitHub page because it summarizes it a little better than I think I could. The PRINCE processor is a password candidate generator and can be thought of as an advanced combinator attack. 
rather than taking as input two different word lists and then outputting all of the possible two-word combinations, Print's processor has only one input word list and builds chains of combined words. These chains can have one to n words from the input word list concatenated together. So pretty neat. Now for any given two-word candidate in a small dictionary, there is likely little to no difference between using prints and combinator. The difference seems to emerge when using slow hashing algorithms and multiple word candidates. A link to the Hashcat forum in which some of these design decisions are discussed, as well as a presentation that includes many more technical details, can be found in the video's description. But essentially, Prince improves on the combinator attack seen in our previous video by making the attack simpler to use, more efficient, and better optimized. Now, it is important to note that Print's processor is an external utility that we do need to download, and it can be downloaded from the GitHub repo you see listed here. And of course, the link is also in the video's description. But once we've extracted the contents, we can simply give it a dictionary and a few options and set it off to work. Okay, enough of the boring part. Let's see this in action. So in the next part of the video, we'll look at the basic options associated with the Prince attack, and then we'll look at a variation of this attack dubbed Prinception. Gotta love that name. So let's take a look. We're going to be using Mac OS for our demo, just as we did in the previous video. For reference, I'm using version 10.13.4, High Sierra, and this is an iMac 5K mid-2017 with 64 gigs of DDR4 memory, solid state storage, and a Radeon Pro 580 with 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory. As you can see, I've pulled up a terminal and I'm currently in the Hashcat directory. Now before we get started, I will mention that you'll see another slightly new concept during this demo. As seen in the previous section, Hashcat can deliver results in the form of standard output, STD out. But Hashcat can also take input from multiple other sources in the form of standard input, STD in. In this demo, we're going to pipe the output of the Prince processor utility into Hashcat, adding some rules along the way. We have a list of hashes kindly donated to us via a pastebin submission, and the list was originally comprised of 6,212 deduplicated MD5 hashes. We've taken the list and run it through some of our previous password cracking options, such as dictionary and brute force, as seen in the previous video. At this point, we've run through our basic options from last time, and we can safely say that we've eliminated the lowest hanging fruit. Our current uncracked list contains 169 hashes. Now we could feed Hashcat larger word lists with more rules, or brute force a longer character set, however this isn't very elegant and quickly begins to have diminishing payoff. So again, we started with 6,212 hashes, and we're down to 169 remaining hashes that we'd like to try to crack. Let's check out the Prince attack and see if it can help us here. First, a bit of housekeeping. I created a Hashcat directory on the desktop, and I am currently in that directory. Within that directory, we have three subdirectories, hashes, prints, and word lists. The hashes directory contains a single file called example underscore md5.txt, which of course is the file containing the hashes we'd like to try to crack. If we do a word count on that particular file, you'll see it is indeed 6,212 lines long. Prints contains a clone of the GitHub repo containing the Prints processor utility, and Word Lists contains a single word list, which is the Rocky word list. So to invoke the Prints attack, we'll go ahead and enter the following command. As we just saw, the Prints processor utility is located within the Prints subdirectory, and the name of the Mac OS version's binary is pp64.app. Next, we'll need to specify a word list, which in our case will be rocku.txt. We'll then pipe this through Hashcat. We'll use dash capital O for optimized kernels, as we previously discussed. Dash A is the attack mode, which will be zero for dictionary in our example. Dash M is the hash type, which will again be zero, meaning MD5. 
And then lastly, we'll specify the file containing the hashes that we want to try to crack, which is example underscore md5.txt. So let's go ahead and run this command. And as you can see, we immediately see passwords being dumped. So it appears to be cracking these fairly quickly. Off camera, I'll continue to let this run for several minutes until I see this slow way down. At that point, when we start seeing diminishing returns, I'll stop Hashcat, and then we'll resume the video and review the results. And welcome back. Approximately five minutes have passed since I launched the Prince attack. At first, we were starting to see hashes fall very quickly, as you can see here. After about three minutes, it seemed to slow down significantly. And after about five minutes, it was extremely slow and I was seeing diminishing returns, so I went ahead and stopped Hashcat. These are status messages which by default are displayed every 10 seconds, and as I scroll down, you'll notice the number of recovered passwords in between these is becoming fewer and fewer. Regardless though, we began to see passwords not included in the default Rocky dictionary start to fall fairly quickly here. Next though, we're going to take a look at a variation of this attack called Prinception. We'll use that attack to see if we can recover any additional passwords from the remaining passwords in the hashes file. So let's take a look. Rather than feeding the Prince processor a dictionary file of words, we can actually feed Prince processor the output of another Prince processor. This generates excellent password candidates that frankly no one would guess on their own. We'll also introduce one additional flag in this example. You'll recall that I mentioned that by default we were seeing those status messages every 10 seconds. Well, those can get fairly noisy and you may prefer to not have any or at least not have so many. We can use the dash dash status dash timer option to adjust that. If we set it to zero, we'll completely disable those messages or we can set it to a value that's reasonable enough to not annoy us. We're actually going to be using 600 for 10 minutes. So now let's actually take a look at the syntax involved in executing a Prinception attack. We'll start off very similar to the previous command by invoking the pp64.app and specifying the Rocky word list. But instead of piping the output to Hashcat, we're actually going to pipe it to the same app, pp64.app. And then we're going to pipe that to Hashcat, again specifying dash capital O, dash A0, dash M0, dash dash status, dash timer, 600. And then finally, our example underscore md5.txt file. Now let's let this run for a couple of minutes. What I'm going to do is pause the video here and we'll come back and see if we're able to recover any additional hashes. And welcome back again. Another five minutes have passed and using Prinception, as you can see, we were able to recover two additional passwords that we were not able to recover with Prince. It's also worth noting that we can use both Prince and Prinception with rules such as the best 64 rule. And I'd also like to mention that pp64.app has numerous other additional options that we did not cover here, so be sure to check out the help. And that wraps up part two of Introduction to Hashcat. I hope this content has been informative and useful to you, and I would highly encourage you to check out Prince and Prinception for yourself. These are excellent attacks, so you should experiment with them and see if they are beneficial for you. Also check out Mike Peterson's website at nullsec.us, linked in the video's description. I'd like to again acknowledge his work as he developed the content for this and the previous episode in this series. If you'd like to see a part three, let us know in the comments below. And as always, please do like, subscribe, and share. And if you're able, consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you again for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And I'll see you in the next one.